We were facing the problem that we had one paddock where all the effluent had been going for a long time and the soil tests showed that you know it wasn't good for it to keep going to that one area. Being able to put it out through the Piper and Riser system, it allowed us to disperse a large amount of nutrients across a wider area. Steve and Jess Knight's demonstration site is comparing soil nutrient levels across five different areas where effluent has been applied for varying lengths of time. The Sustainable Irrigation Program grant has supported soil testing across those five sites for the two years of the project to track soil nutrient levels. We purchased the farm uh, just over nine years ago. We had a milking platform of 70 hectares. We were milking 200 cows. When we got here, irrigation was a lot of hard work. It was very antiquated systems. Then we've also got a natural water course that runs through the farm. It's not very far from the effluent system. So we knew that we had to be really on board of managing it. Our main aim was to grow in size. Now we milk 530 cows with the aim to be up to 600 by next spring calving. We built a 250 meg storage dam, which has allowed us to increase our herd size. This meant a new dairy, which then led to needing better effluent systems. So we've moved into a larger storage system, but it was just sitting there, you needed it emptied, you know, what could we do with it? How could we make use of it on the farm? So being able to put it out through the Piper and Riser system, we're decreasing bought in fertiliser and we're also using something on farm that we would have had to dispose of otherwise. So it all starts at the dairy when the cows are there. This is a daily thing, washing up the yard. Water comes from the pump shed up over behind us. Water runs down the dairy yard, gets to the end here, and then flows through to a solids trap, which catches all the solid material. And then there's a pipe for all the liquid to go over into the effluent dam. This is our two pond system. We used to only have one pond and that's when we were getting the problems with the sludge coming through the pipes as well. But as you can see with the two pond system, we've got the sludge in the first one and then in the second pond, nice and clear effluent water that's getting pumped out to the paddocks now. We've had this system for two years now and this will be the first time that we'll have to have the sludge removed from the first pond, which is a really good outcome. So this is the whole engine room of the show, I guess, now. This is the actual riser with uh, outlet each bay. So they open and shut as told by the system. Bricks and concrete and, and the dirt build up at the tops here. This just protects any erosion around the outlet and directs it in the, the way we want it to travel. The paddock is split up into bays that are the right size for the amount of water that's coming out so we can control how much water the area gets. The paddock is laser graded so that it's on a incline to allow the water to flow down the paddock so we're not having to pump the water down the paddock. When it does get to the end of the bay there is a reuse dam there where all the water is captured and then can be um, directed back onto the farm so none of those nutrients are going into the local waterways. So as far as picking paddocks with the pipe and riser, I find it works very well if you can try and time a watering behind the cows and then we pretty much take that watering injected with the effluent as a, as a nitrogen application directly behind. As we get them out of the paddock, there'll be water coming on and, and then we give it that maximum infiltration slash rest time to let the nutrient do its thing between grazings. Automation on the system has allowed for a lot more ease of use. Um, it used to be, you know, you'd spend days just doing irrigation and now it's literally you tap a button on your phone or the staff can go into the office at the dairy and do it on the computer. But then we can run it whenever we want. You can go to bed at night and know that a bay is going to switch off and the next one's going to turn on and you can still get a good night's sleep. We had an area which has had effluent applied for many years, uh, then one that's only been the last three years, and then some dry land that's just been converted to irrigation which hasn't had any. Through the project, we've been able to set certain areas that were being deep core soil tested, normal soil tests, and tissue tests. Soil testing is absolutely crucial when you are applying effluent to your pastures to know how much nutrient you're applying, whether it's building up in the soil, and the areas that need effluent and the areas that don't. The potential risk of building up effluent in the soil is that there'll be leaching into the groundwater or there'll actually be runoff of nutrients into the waterways. So the soil tests here at Steve and Jess show very clearly that there's areas of the farm where effluent does not need to be applied. 
areas of the farm that need a maintenance application and areas of the farm that actually need quite a repeated application to bring the nutrient levels up in the soil. It's allowing us to compare these different areas and see the effect that we're having by applying the effluent and if it's actually necessary on those paddocks or if there's some that we need to stop putting it on and just focus on other areas.